what advice can you give students who are also pursuing a career that crosses cultural boundaries like the one yours does? Well, um, there's good news and bad news. The good news is the world is getting smaller, so a lot of things that you will do will be cross-cultural. Uh, and it certainly helps if you have the, um, you know, the, the knowledge and wherewithal to do that. Um, the bad news is that uh, you often have to therefore manage two different cultures or two different uh, you know, constraints and demands. So I would say um, if you're planning to do something cross-cultural, uh, plan on spending more time just learning what you're going to do. Now your question didn't specifically mention business, so I presume it means larger. Whether you're working in a business or whether you're working in an NGO, whether you're working in um, you know, an international organization uh, like the UN, wherever you are, if you're going to be cited in a cross-cultural uh, job, uh, you should just allow, if that's a career path you want to follow, just give yourself more time to learn the ropes. Um, and if it's business that you're eventually headed to, then uh, again, um, the challenges of doing business um, outside your domestic environment are, are, can be, for instance, say in a place like India, can be enormous. And so don't ever discount that. It'll take you longer to do things, it'll be you know, more cumbersome. Uh, and then there'll be contextual and cultural nuances which um, you, know, you will only learn by being inside. Uh, for a while. Now having said that, um, uh, sometimes when you come from the outside, you come without any preconception and uh, you can probably get things done which somebody who's already inside says cannot be done. So in that sense, uh, it's, it's certainly great if that's what you're planning to do. Mm -hmm. But I would count on being patient. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I have one more. Do we have time for um, what are your plans for the future uh, in your career? You know, I know that you're working on economic research right now, right? Right. Uh, so on my economic side, I'm very involved in um, the economics of climate change. And, um, you know, we, for climate change uh, negotiations, as you probably know, uh, we've come to a real crossroads. Uh, the world has come to a real crossroads, uh, both because the problem is, is now upon us uh, but also because the nations of the world uh, finally seem ready to try and, and hammer something out this year, at the end of the year in Paris, uh, people are expecting that there's going to be a, well, if not a big treaty, at least a semi-big treaty that will be announced. Uh, so it's an exciting time to, to try and, and um, uh, think about that and, and possibly you know, uh, help shape some of those policies. Uh, on the art business side, uh, our challenge is very straightforward. Uh, we have finally begun to uh, go through the Western uh, art uh, establishment. Um, you know, the gallery has recently placed works at the Metropolitan Museum, the Art Institute of Chicago, Guggenheim, etc. And so, what we are really hoping to do in the next five years is uh, move um, the perception of the gallery as a gallery uh, into the mainstream rather than the pigeonhole as, as a South Asian gallery, you know, just to be known as an art gallery. Uh, and as far as the real estate is concerned, that's a longer term play. So um, I think we're just going to, next time, uh, the next few years, we're just going to find what works and what doesn't work. 